five out of nine players selected over Paul George aren't even in the NBA anymore. So what happened? The 2010 draft class was supposed to be full of potential, but fast forward 10 years later, and the only star among them that remains is the two-way forward from Fresno State. Let's take a look at what happened to the nine players drafted before Paul George. Coming in as the first overall pick, the Washington Wizards selected the electrifying point guard out of Kentucky, John Wall. As the clear number one prospect coming out of college, teams were excited to see the insanely athletic and quick guard playing in the NBA. He dominated early on in his career and quickly rose to become the franchise player for the Washington Wizards. As a five-time All-Star and an All-NBA player, Wall was an absolute beast in his prime years. He got it done on both ends of the court as a speed demon offensively while being a solid defender for his size. Check out how he literally makes it coast to coast in three and a half seconds. Beyond his speed and quickness, Wall also possessed great passing vision and an excellent ability to finish around the rim. Despite his individual performances, his team often fell short in the playoffs and never made it far when contending for the title. Injuries also played a big part in his career, which ultimately forced him to sit out the entire 2021-22 season for the Rockets after getting traded there for Westbrook and a first-round pick. Fortunately, he's been given another chance to shine with the LA Clippers after a buyout deal with the Houston Rockets. With their new talent and core players returning, the Clippers are looking scary if Leonard, George, and Wall all manage to stay healthy. Up next, we have the second overall pick for the Philadelphia 76ers, who selected Evan Turner. Being the Big Ten Player of the Year and Tournament MVP, Turner was a highly sought-after prospect despite already being 21 at the time. He showed superstar potential, especially when he posterized LeBron James. With the solid roster in Turner, Lou Will, Drew Holiday, Andre Iguodala, and Thaddeus Young, fans expected the Sixers to perform well in the playoffs, but they never even made it past the second round. After Turner didn't become the franchise player that they hoped, the Sixers decided that it was time to rebuild, so they traded him. After he was traded to the Pacers, he failed to build chemistry with the rest of the team and even got into fights during practice. Turner played for several other teams, but after his contract ended with the Atlanta Hawks in 2020, he decided to retire as a player and became an assistant coach for the Boston Celtics. The 76ers drafted Turner thinking that he was already a finished product ready for the league, but that was not the case for the third overall pick, Derek Favors. When the New Jersey Nets selected the power forward from Ohio State, they saw great potential worth developing. With a solid rebounding and strong rim finishing ability, many fans expected him to have a breakout season while becoming an all-star caliber player. However, he never actually reached that level. He managed to play decent minutes for his teams, but for a third pick, he's had more or less a mediocre career. If anything, this dunk by Kawhi Leonard all over him pretty much sums up his luck. Today, he is still in the NBA as a bench player for the OKC Thunder. Despite not living up to expectations, he still became a great role player, unlike the pick after him, who became a total bust. Wesley Johnson was selected fourth overall by the Minnesota Timberwolves. Scouts often compared him to Sean Marion because of his speed, athleticism, and how efficient he played even when the ball wasn't in his hands. He had lower potential compared to the rest of the class, but the Timberwolves thought that being older than most of the rookies meant that Johnson would be ready for the NBA without needing much development. And boy, were they wrong. Johnson was naturally gifted, but his lack of decision-making skills essentially made his physical tools useless. You rarely noticed him because he often did nothing on the court. And if you do remember, it's probably because of James Harden's savage crossover that sent Johnson to the fourth dimension. After jumping from team to team, his time in the NBA ended when he was waived by the Washington Wizards in 2019. After that, he took his talents to the EuroLeague. The elite level he showed in college just never translated to the NBA, but a player whose dominance did carry on to the league was DeMarcus Cousins, the fifth pick that went to the Sacramento Kings. The center from Duke was dominant in the paint, bullying absolutely everyone. Just look at how he literally blows by the whole Spurs team to slam it down. During his peak years, most would agree that he was the best center in the league and was on his way to being the best player in the 2010 draft class after becoming a four-time All-Star and two-time All-NBA. However, numerous injuries caused Cousins' career to rapidly decline. In 2019, he joined a stacked Golden State Warriors roster in hopes of finally getting a ring. He was so close, reaching the NBA Finals only to lose to the Toronto Raptors in six games. Last season, he signed a 10-day contract with the Denver Nuggets, but nowadays, the former superstar is often a free agent, bouncing around from team to team. Instead of the unstoppable offense of DeMarcus Cousins, the Golden State Warriors went for a defensive big with their sixth pick, Epe Udo. 
Warriors fans were hyped about Udo's strength, agility, and huge wingspan, the perfect tools for a lockdown defender. He was effective in the paint and in shot blocking. He also had no trouble keeping up with quick guards, which was rare during those times while possessing great ball handling and passing skills for a big man. However, he never developed an offensive game, which was the main reason for his lackluster career. Getting postered like this by the King also didn't exactly help his case. His last year was spent playing for the Los Angeles Clippers before heading to play in the Euro League. The role that he was supposed to fill as a defensive big man who could guard anyone eventually went to Draymond Green. Fortunately, the selection after Udo was another center that had a much better career than him. The Detroit Pistons had the seventh pick, which they used to acquire Greg Monroe from Georgetown University. Monroe had a great start to his career with the media often favoring his stable play more than his rival, DeMarcus Cousins. They literally said, quote, If Cousins is the broke kid's Amari, then Monroe is the broke kid's Duncan, and I know who I want in the matchup. He was a menace on both sides of the floor, like this play where he gets the steal and finishes with a monster slam at the other end. His most effective move was going to work in the post, but when the game started evolving to a faster pace and teams began running small ball lineups more often, he just wasn't able to keep up. His old school way of playing was too slow for modern basketball. He transitioned to a role player, played last season for the Minnesota Timberwolves, and is currently a free agent. Monroe started strong but fell off fast, the complete opposite of what happened to the eighth pick of the draft, Al Farouk Aminu. Aminu was drafted by the Los Angeles Clippers yet only played there for one year and was looking like a bust because how bad he shot the ball. However, Aminu eventually developed his offensive game in the following years and became a legitimate threat from beyond the arc. He even became a vital piece for the Portland Trail Blazers lineup as a great 3 and D player. He could make it rain from deep three-point range. He could lock up stars like what he did to LeBron James. The last time Aminu stepped on the court was in a preseason game before being waived by the Spurs. He did sign a 10-day contract with the Boston Celtics, but he never played a game with them. Aminu was no doubt a solid player, but the Clippers could have instead gotten an all-star small forward had they drafted the ninth overall pick, Gordon Hayward. Before carrying his team to the 2010 NCAA championship, Hayward's name didn't even appear in the mock drafts. But his astounding performance during the finals against Duke University made him a lottery pick. In his years playing at Utah, he was a two-way wing that took high-volume shots at an efficient rate. He had crazy athleticism and had no trouble soaring over defenders. He signed with the Boston Celtics in 2017 and was seemed to be the prelude to a dynasty consisting of Hayward, Kyrie Irving, Jason Tatum, and Jalen Brown. However, that season tragically ended after he literally broke his leg during a game. He was able to recover from the injury, but it took a massive toll on him and his career. If that injury never happened, can you imagine what the Boston Celtics could have accomplished? In his prime, he rivaled another great small forward and the last person on this list. With the 10th pick, Paul George was selected by the Indiana Pacers. He played there for seven seasons and led the team to several playoff runs where he faced a stacked Miami Heat and went head-to-head -head against LeBron James. The seven-time All-Star, six-time All-NBA team, four-time All-Defensive team, and former Most Improved player is currently with the Los Angeles Clippers and remains one of the most dominant two-way players in the league. He made it all the way up to the Western Conference Finals with the Clippers, but has yet to win a championship. Do you think PG-13 got drafted way too late in the 2010 NBA Draft? Let us know in the comments below. For every draft, there are always players who turned out to be better than everyone thought. Check out this next video on the biggest sleepers for this year's NBA Draft. I'll see you there.